Carolina from 30 Minute Crafts and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make this little change purse with a key fob attachment using your Cricut Maker. Are you ready? Let's get started. I'm going to start with my iPad and I'm going to look under the category section for the Simplicity Designs. I'm going to type in change. And our little change purse comes up. It says it's an intermediate project. It'll take one to two hours. I really don't think it's going to take us that long. I love that right here, it already gives you all the details. Finish size is three and a half by five and a half. The materials to cut, it says we'll need a quarter yard of interfacing or lightweight fusible. We'll need our uh, dark pink fabric for the front and back and our pink contrasting fabric for the uh, front and back. We'll also need our fabric rip map, our washable fabric pen, our webbing, a five inch zipper, a key fob, and a swivel hook. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather those supplies. One more thing I wanna show you, because while videos like this one are an awesome resource, there isn't necessarily a video for every single project in Cricut Design Space. However, all these simplicity products, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a little gray bar here, and it says Change Purse Assembly PDF. So I can click on this, and it'll bring up a PDF with all of my instructions to show me how to make this change purse. So cutting my interfacing, cutting my lining, cutting my outside and inside, <clears throat> And the step-by-step -step instructions. We'll be going through these step-by-step -step instructions today in the video, but if you ever need a paper to reference back to, the Simplicity step-by-step -step written instructions are right in the Cricut app, right there. And you can actually print these out to have next to you as you sew as well. There is a cost to make this change purse. I've already paid it, so it shows zero here. And I'm going to go ahead and say make it so we can bring everything to the mat. So I have my supplies here. I went ahead and grabbed one of the Cricut packs of fabric. The Cricut fabrics are great because they're already cut to 12 inches wide, which is perfect for our mats. I also have a couple different zipper options. Now I collect zippers and I don't have any five inch zippers, but a longer zipper will always work. And I'm going to show you how you can use a longer zipper if you can't find an exactly five inch zipper in the color that you like. I picked a couple different colors that I thought would go well with these fabrics. And I think I've decided that I like this mint one best, so I'm gonna use this one. And I can tuck the other ones out of the way. Now it's big decision time. Do I want to use this for the outside, this for the inside, this for the inside, outside? I've got so many choices. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this fun floral for my outside. And I've chosen this mint colored zipper. So I think I'm going to go with the matching mint colored inside. To put the fabric on the mat is fairly simple. Grab your fabric, and remember we are using one of these fabric pens, and so whenever the supply list calls for a fabric pen, we do want to put the fabric right side down. The selvage edge has this pretty design on the edge, and it has this fringe on the edge, and this is part of the weaving process. These colors actually tell you the colors that are in the design. So when you're looking for what zipper will match up, you can actually match up against these. We're going to float this right side down with the selvage on the far end. And that gives us a nice straight edge to line up right here. We can press this down. Now there are some people who are at home just screaming, you have to iron your fabrics before you cut it. And generally I say yes. When I use a rotary cutter and ruler, absolutely use an iron. And if this fabric is excessively wrinkly, yes, absolutely use an iron. But there's no true creases in this fabric. It's just a little bit folded. And by pressing it onto the mat, I really am pressing it. And I get a nice, smooth, flat surface. So I'll press this all the way down to the edge. And then I can use my fabric brayer to really press it down. And I will give you links to all these special tools down below, so make sure you grab those links if you don't have these supplies yet. So this fabric mat is done. I'm going to go ahead and put my lining fabric as well as my interfacing on my fabric mats, and then we'll be ready to take it to the machine.
One big question I always get on these Cricut sewing videos is can I use my Explore, Explore Air or any other machine other than the Cricut Maker in order to make this sewing project? And unfortunately, the answer is no. The Simplicity projects are designed to use this rotary blade and this rotary blade is specific to the Cricut Maker. You'll see if you compare it to this blade, which is the fine point blade that comes in all the other machines, that it looks quite a bit different. We've got this gold or bronze colored top with a gear in it, in addition to the different tip at the bottom. But it's really this gear at the top that makes the difference. Because when we're cutting with a regular fine tip blade, it cuts across the surface of the paper or whatever material we're using. And the blade that's inside here, this blade is actually a loose blade. And so it spins on its own so that the direction of the sharp point is always forward. And when it pivots, it pivots inside there naturally because of friction. With fabric, if we tried to slice across the fabric threads like that, if they weren't secured with some kind of interfacing or inner lining, it would shred and it would just shred and catch on all of those threads. And so that doesn't work. So for fabric, we really do need a rotary blade. With a rotary blade, we have to have this pivot tool because if we're cutting in one direction and then we want to turn it, we can't have, while pressing up against a fabric, it turn because that would cause rips and awful, awful corners. We don't want that at all. So instead, we go across the fabric, it lifts it up, and then it uses this gear to turn the blade, and then it puts it back down on the fabric, and then it cuts again. And it's this process of cutting, lifting, turning, going back down, and then cutting again that's unique to the rotary blade and unique to the Cricut Maker. So that's why you have to have a Cricut Maker to make these projects. We have our file all set up, and I left it on the 12 by 12 mats because everything fits on 12 by 12 mats. Even though I'm cutting on 12 by 24 mats, it doesn't matter. You can always cut on a larger mat, even when it thinks you're cutting on a smaller mat. You just can't do that the other way around. So the first thing I need to do is set up my machine. Right now I have my scoring stylus and my fine tip laid in. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. And I can put those away. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my fabric marking pen in. And then I always put the lid on the back so that way I can find it later. Now it's time to put the rotary blade in. These teeth go against the back. It just sits right in there and close it up. Now I'm all set up. The first is the interfacing. It says set material. We click on all materials. I went to fusible interfacing. Now I can load my mat. And have it draw and cut. You'll see at the corners, it picks up and turns the blade. The interfacing's all cut. I just need to cut the two layers of fabric. And I need to make sure that I change it to fabric like cotton. After I finish cutting, I always make sure to take out my pen and put the lid back on so that it doesn't dry out. Now we're ready to take everything over to the sewing machine. Now we have everything cut out and we can remove the fabric from the mat. One thing to know is that we don't want to touch the mat whenever possible because the oils from your fingers are going to reduce the life of the mat. 
So I can just peel this up carefully. And just touching the very edges of the mat where there's no adhesive, that part where the roller would go. Now these are my favorite tools to use. These are little like mantis tweezers. And they're my favorite for removing the fabric from the mat. I grab a little corner and I carefully peel. If you notice that you're getting some fraying on one edge, kind of move towards another edge. And a little bit of fray is not a big deal. We do have a tomb allowance on all of these. So grabbing the other one. Now I'm going to do the same to remove all the pieces from the mats. If you do end up with a lot of threads like this on your mat, you can use these tweezers to remove them. Another great tool is a lint roller. You can actually use an adhesive lint roller to just roll right over your mat and pick up these threads as well. A few threads here and there really is not going to hurt the mat on future projects, but I like to keep it as clean as possible. One thing you don't want to do with this mat is use a scraper because using those scrapers that we're used to on the paper mats will actually pull off the adhesive from the fabric mat. So we don't want to use a scraper on these mats. So we have all of our pieces cut out. We have our outer pieces, our lining pieces, our interfacing pieces. This little piece is to attach the key fob. And then we have this right here, which is going to be for the key fob. The interfacing needs to get fused to the outer pieces. And I'm actually going to do that with my easy press. So I have my easy press all set up here with the easy press mat. I'm going to put down one of my outer lining pieces right side down. And then this I'm going to put fusible side, which is the bumpy side towards the fabric. If you put the fusible side up, you'll get that fusible all over your mat. I'm going to line these up. And if you see this little registration mark right here lines up exactly with that one. And then I can just fuse it down. I'm going to repeat this process with the other outer piece and then I'll go ahead and do a quick press on the lining pieces just to get those nice and smooth. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our zipper and we're going to grab two pieces, our outer piece and our inner piece. We're going to put the zipper on top of the outer piece and we want it to face the outer piece. Now you can open it up a couple centimeters or a couple inches, that's fine. Since we're using a long zipper, which actually can be handy in this case, you can actually open it all the way. It's really just about getting that zipper pull out of the way. We're going to line up this edge and pin. Now, some people might put their pins parallel with the edge here, but I'm actually going to stick them in the other way. That's perpendicular to the edge and the reason that I'm doing that is because they're much easier to pull out when you're done stitching. So I'm just going to pin all the way to the edge. Now the instructions tell you to do a basting stitch and what that means is you're just going to do a large stitch right along this edge and you totally can and you can absolutely follow those instructions but this is 30 minute crafts and the reason we're 30 minute crafts is because we do a couple little shortcuts. Because I've pinned so well I don't think I need to baste. I can put the lining right on top, line up those edges, and add a couple more pins between. So rather than thread basting or stitching, I've just pin basted it. So now we're ready to take this to our sewing machine, but our sewing machine is not ready for us. This right here is a quarter inch foot, and that's great for piecing, and we will be using this. But for a zipper, we actually want to use a zipper foot. Just install that zipper foot. Now this zipper foot, as with most zipper feet, I can't have the needle in the middle because it'll hit. So I just need to move my needle over 
to the edge. Now when I sew, the edge of the zipper is going to come up against the edge of this foot and that's what's going to keep this seam straight. Some people ask if you have to go forward and back at the beginning and end of these stitches, and you don't because we're going to be stitching this seam along here, which is going to close it up, so there's no reason to go forward and back. Before you get to a pin, make sure you pull it out. And you're going to stitch all the way across, needle up, and clip your threads. We have our zipper on one side. We're going to carefully tug the zipper out, and this is called finger pressing where we with our fingers just lightly press everything, and we're just pulling this lining away and finger pressing that down. and then pulling the front away and just finger pressing it down. And we will be taking this to our iron in a little bit. You can go ahead and close up that zipper for a second. And now we're gonna put on the other side of the bag and it's basically done the exact same way. Make sure that your lining piece and your lining piece are touching each other and your outer piece and your outer piece are touching each other. Otherwise you'll end up with a bag that has a lining and an outer on the outside and a lining and an outer on the inside, which could be a cute option as well. Now we're going to go ahead and stitch this side closed. You absolutely can pin this if you like. I'm really not a big fan of pinning, so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch it. But absolutely, if you're new, go to the last step and pin it just like we did before. Now when you get to the zipper pull, it's going to get tricky because you're going to feel like you have to go over it. You absolutely don't. Make sure that your needle is down, bring your presser foot up, and you can pivot this whole thing because it'll pivot right back into place. Find that zipper pull, and then just pull or push it out of the way. There we go. Now we don't have to worry about a big lump. We can just keep stitching. Now we have both sides of our little coin purse. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna tug and just finger press both the outside and the lining as well. Everything's lining up beautifully and looking great. I put this on my Easy Press mat and I can go press it with my Easy Press. Make sure not to go too hot because if you're using a plastic zipper, you don't want those plastic zipper edges to melt. So we'll just give it a quick press. Flip it over to the other side. Make sure that you have those lining pieces snug back. And give it a quick press here as well. While we're here at the easy press mat, we're going to go ahead and make our loop. We're going to start by folding this in half. And carefully pressing with the easy press mat. Now we can open it up. And it's still warm, so be careful with your fingers. You can press these in and press it in half. And you want to make sure that these edges line up nicely. That's looking good. And then just press that with the mat as well. Now 
that looks perfect. I'm going to take it to the machine and just give it a quick stitch right across here to secure it. And I'm going to do another stitch right across this side as well to give it even stitching on both sides and make it look nice. Those stitches will be about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now we're going to do a quick top stitch, which is a nice way to just finish up this edge. Take the lining, pull it out of the way. We can actually move our zipper out of the way. Make sure that your needle's in a good position to be able to grab just the very, very edge of that fabric. Just stitching all the way down. You can move the lining back into place and then do the same with the other side. This top stitching helps keep this top layer of fabric smooth down and looking beautiful and I think a top stitch always adds a nice pretty edge as well. To make the stitches, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my quarter inch foot. I'm done putting in my zipper so I'm actually done with my zipper foot for this project. Both edges have been stitched and now we can put the pouch together. So I have my zipper pouch and I have my little loop and there is a mark here that you can see through the fabric and that's where this loop needs to get attached. So I'm going to fold it in half and pin it into place. The instructions do tell you to baste it. I'm just going to pin it and we're only pinning through the top layer of fabric, not the lining fabric. And that pin is sticking way out, so I'll be able to remove it easily. Here comes the important part. You do want to open your zipper at least halfway, and this will make it so you can turn it right side out when it's time to turn it right side out. Now we're going to put our two outside pieces right sides together. The zipper, you can see it's adding some depth here. So when I do this, I take that zipper and I fold it so the seam allowances are towards the lining and then back up with the seam allowances towards the lining again. And this is definitely a spot where you want to use some pins, even if you're not a big pinner. And on the other side as well, seam allowances towards the lining with the zipper popped up, line up those edges. It doesn't hurt to add a couple pins to line up the outside edges, especially when we have that big bulk here that's going to be pulling everything kind of out of alignment. So adding a couple pins here is a huge help. We're in the home stretch. The instructions tell us to use a half inch seam allowance to stitch all the way around. And we're going to leave a hole in the lining, oh, about three inches or so big. No need to forward stitch and back stitch at the beginning and end. 
And if you're having trouble going smoothly around the curves, just lift up your presser foot, put it back down, and that'll smooth out any ruffles or puckers. You do want to be careful when you head up to the zipper because there is a metal tab in there and you don't want to hit that with your needle. It'll bend your needle, break your needle, or could damage your machine. So make sure that you feel for where that is. You can even peek in a little bit if you need to. There it is. And then I do like to go forward and back a little bit at the beginning and end of this seam. Now we're coming up on where that tab is. That tab is gonna get a lot of wear and tear, so I like to give it an extra forward and back as well. Forward and back over the zipper. And there we go, we made it all the way around. There's a couple things. We've got this big tail from our extra long zipper, so we can go ahead. We can we can go ahead and cut that off now. And just trim it flush to your pouch. And then we're gonna clip these corners. On a curve, you want to just give it a little extra room to breathe by clipping some little triangles towards the seam. And that will give that seam room to stretch as it opens up. Again, what we're doing is just cutting some little triangles out. And we're going to do that on all four corners because we've got our two lining corners as well as our two outer corners. Going through this hole that we left, we're going to turn our pouch right side out. If you didn't leave a big enough hole, then you can go ahead and just use a seam ripper to open that hole up a little bit more. And this is the part where you'll be really glad that you left that zipper halfway open. You can just reach through and open it up the rest of the way. Now you don't ever want to use your sharp scissors to poke out the corners. Instead, use a pen cap or something that's more curved and not nearly as sharp. So we can actually pull the lining out and insert that pen into the hole in the lining. To poke out those curves. And if your curves aren't curving as much as you'd like, you can turn it wrong side out again and reclip those corners because maybe you didn't clip them well enough. Now we're going to take this lining seam here we can fold it in and then we can stitch this seam closed. If you'd like you can use pins but I don't feel the need here. This is a seam where you do want to take a couple stitches forward and a couple back. If 
you'd like, you can make these stitches by hand, but they're going to be hidden inside the lining. Make sure you trim off any extra little threads. And now you can tuck the lining inside the little change purse. And how perfect is that? Your change purse is complete. You just need to finish up by adding your key fob and then you've got a little handle for your change purse. I have another video that goes into lots of detail on how to make this key fob bit, but I'll go ahead and do it here for you real quick, but I'm leaving that link below. So if you want the full detailed how to make this key fob, you'll find that there. You're gonna need some of these wonder clips. They're gonna work better than pins for this. A piece of scrap fabric, your pliers, this is the key fob hardware. And then you'll want a little swivel hook. This is the piece of fabric that we cut. And this is some webbing that we're going to use. I have a yard, which is enough for three of these key fobs. I've heated up my easy press and now I'm folding over on the dotted lines that were marked by the Cricut Maker with the fabric pen. I'm just going to finger press along that line. We've got our webbing and this is where we're going to use those wonder clips. Just line it up on the webbing and we can use these clips to secure the fabric in place and it keeps it so much smoother and more flat than pins do. There we go, now I can take this to the sewing machine and stitch lines on both sides. Fold it in half. And then you want to stitch several times back and forth right here at this top. And this is going to keep the layers from slipping. Now we can attach the hard bar. We're gonna start with this clamp piece and there's two little hooks inside there. We wanna make sure that those hooks get into the fabric. So get your fabric and webbing as far back into the wedge of the key fob as possible. And then you can start to close it with your fingers a little bit if you have some good grip strength and that'll start to secure it in place. And now this is where that scrap of fabric comes in. Put the scrap of fabric over the top so that you're not damaging anything with your pliers as you squeeze it closed. Take a look. That looks pretty much perfect. Now we're gonna open up the swivel hook. This gets attached to the key ring, and as long as we have the key ring open, we can attach the key fob at the same time. And now we have our handle key fob attachment ready to go onto our little clutch. And that's how easy it is to make this little coin purse and a key fob. You're gonna find it so handy to put all your little coins and coupons and whatever whatnots in here, zip it up, and have it attached to your keys and your little coin purse at the same time. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Just make sure you subscribe to this channel for all my crafty updates. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. I do watch for those. Thanks again. Have a wonderful and crafty day.